Um, thanks for coming. I'm Mark Rifkin. Uh, this is the 10th anniversary of This Week in New York. Um, which brings us to our first reader. Andrew Giangola says he learned everything he needed to know about life in my basement on Long Island in Malvern, where we sang Beatles songs to their records using tennis rackets instead of guitars. Andrew Giangola's first public reading. I closed the office door, dropped my drawers, and madly colored my pale, pasty, and winter legs a gorgeous shade of black. I put the pants on, presto, you can't see the holes. I am in holy pants at a high-class event, but no one seems to notice. Except the next morning when I wake up in my tidy whites. Hal, our Pomeranian, spots me. He peers at my big black legs. The fur above his eyes lifts physically. He tilts his head in unmistakable keen on body language, saying, are you freaking kidding me? Hal starts barking like the chuck wagon just zipped by. He just goes bonkers. I try to quiet and soothe the crazy Pomeranian. My efforts yield no results. There is just no stopping a young dog who has seen something this utterly disturbing. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Memphis native Megan Riley's sophomore album, Let Your Ghost Go, comes on like a fever dream, hot and swooning, brimming with love and death and sadness and joy, a voice both hazy and powerfully direct. And tonight she's playing with the great James Mastro, who is the quiet one they all warned you about. These guys are great, Megan and Jim. Girls, a YA novel forthcoming from uh, Dutton Penguin this June, as well as the middle grade novel Denny Noir, which is also amazing. The book comes out June, but she's doing us the favor of giving her first public reading of Imaginary Girls, Nova Rensuma. Only then, all those eyes on me in the water, did I wonder if this is what it felt like to be my sister, to be looked at this way always, to be seen. She was gazing down at me down from a very long distance, but straight centered into my eyes. You ready, she asked, and sent a smile that was meant for me only, understood to be mine. I knew she was already gathering the pieces of the story she'd tell tomorrow. Ruby loved her stories, and here I was, the star. Ready, I said. This would be the story of my crossing, and with the 20 bucks for my effort, we'd ignore the overdue phone bill and buy dinner at the Little Bear. This would not be the story of how I drowned at the deepest point of the reservoir the summer I was 14. Ruby would never let it happen. Thank you. Our next uh, great band, led by Paula Carino, a Brooklyn-based singer-songwriter who led the power pop band Regular Einstein in the 90s and has also released uh, two solo albums on her own intellectual House of Pancakes label. Give it up for the amazing Paula Carino! Award-nominated Billy Dogma, the semi-autobiographical Street Code, 
which just blows my mind every time he puts out a new one. He's also drawn many great superhero and semi-autobiographical comic books published by Marvel, DC Vertigo, Dark Horse, Image, Glastic, Toon Books, Top Shelf, and New York Times, including collaborations. Check out this list. Harvey Picard, Jonathan Ames, and Vernon Lopez, and illustrates also for Sci-Fi's Warehouse 13 and HBO's Bored to Death. If you watch Bored to Death, all the comics are done by the great Dean. And you can check him out at DeanHaspel.com. He is going to present a brand new street code, Dean Haspel! A zombie apocalypse was the first thought that occupied my mind when the blackout happened. Chalk it up to reading too many Jack Kirby and Johnny Craig monster comic books and enjoying too many late night hammer horror movies, but once my brain settled, it was the post-traumatic stress disorder blues that kicked in, and the sobering reality check that normal people could wreak worse havoc than an uprising of the dead. Hal Thomas Smith is the author of the Baskin Hill novel 85A, which was recently named one of the best novels of 2010 by the American Library Association's Over the Rainbow Committee. Hal Thomas Smith! Like they strain their eyes reading small print philosophy. Like reading philosophy is all they ever f did when they weren't sitting around with their friends, filling up ashtrays, coughing up their lungs, and discussing the ills of society and the f***ing fate of humanity. Thank you. Thank you, Happy anniversary. I want to thank Ellen, uh, my beautiful, amazing wife. She's unbelievable, and thank you, baby. Uh, the last time I saw Evan Shinners, he was uh, inside a piano blasting away at Beethoven backward as he moved the instrument on wheels across MoMA's second floor atrium. The Juilliard graduate has been playing the piano since he was nine. He made his orchestral debut when he was a mere 12 years old with the Utah Symphony. This is going to be the future of classical music right here. Is preparing to release his next album, a collection of live Bach works performed on keyboard. It's Evan Jitters and his amazing band.